It's really a tragedy that our own government is at war with its own people. Is it a war on drugs or an assault on Oregonians' medical rights? New battle lines are drawn in the medical marijuana debate. Live in HD, this is K2 News at 11 on your side. Good evening, I'm Deborah Knapp. Steve has the evening off. The U.S. District Attorney for Oregon serves notice on all medical marijuana growers. The federal government will not allow the sale of pot anywhere in Oregon. U.S. Attorney Dwight Holton issued the warning not only to growers but to landlords saying, quote, knowingly financing a marijuana dispensary or allowing one to operate on your property also violates federal law and could subject financiers and landlords to civil and criminal penalties. K2's Tom Jensen talked to medical marijuana supporters. He's live outside of a growers market in southeast Portland. So Tom, what are growers and patients saying? Well, let me show you something, Deb, because I was here just a couple of days ago and I talked to the manager of this facility. And as you can see tonight, there on this operation, there is a message on the door, a note saying closed until further notice. And uh, they were operating, as I said, just a couple of days ago. But patients and growers, most of them I talked to, are adamant that these are farmers markets or growers co-ops, and they are not dispensaries. They say there is never a free exchange of money for marijuana at these operations. They also say they believe this is just another assault on the medical marijuana law passed by Oregon voters. It's a busy Friday at a strip mall on Southeast 82nd. Oregon medical marijuana patients by the dozens go into an office and come out with paper bags containing jars of pot. Uh, I've been a uh, card holder now for almost three years. 65-year-old Vietnam veteran Bill Elliott does not get his marijuana at that office, but he manages the nearby cannabis cafe and knows a lot of people who do get their marijuana there. Medical marijuana patients who use this facility say it's not a dispensary, it's a farmer's market. That they make a donation and for that donation, they get a playing card. They then give the playing card to a medical marijuana grower and they may get a jar full of marijuana or they may come up empty. There's no quid pro quo, no guarantee that they'll get marijuana for their money. And because of that, dispensary users and operators tell me off camera they do not believe they're violating laws because they are not actually buying or selling pot. If we don't have any clear-cut uh, decisions or clear-cut guidelines about what are they defining as dispensaries and what are they defining in terms of what we define as a farmer's market, yeah, we can find some gray areas and it could cause us some problems. Elliot says he would like guidance from his government, not threats for doing what he believes is his legal right as an Oregonian. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws sees it the same way. Its Oregon director says closing farmers' markets and growers' co-ops could force medical marijuana patients to find pot wherever they can. They're not allowed to try to find medical marijuana except on the black market. And so this type of behavior and, you know, um, law enforcement with a heavy hand is just pushing people out to the black market. Instead, what the government should do is try to capture that revenue and put it into our state coffers. And whether you call these dispensaries or growers markets or co-ops, patients and supporters of legalization tell us the same thing. They say that these facilities are actually helping drive the black market dope dealers out of business because they say those street dealers cannot compete with the small donation prices that these operations are taking in from medical marijuana patients. Live in Southeast Portland, Tom Jensen, K2 News. Tom